Members, the right honourable the Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, 29th of January 2019. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Namani. <coughs> Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pay respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. And we acknowledge that they're of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. The Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the park for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. I ask all present to stand in silence in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country at sea, on land and in the air. Thank you. I'm pleased to see you. Thank you, members. It takes us to item number five. There are no apologies of leave of absence this evening. Um, Item six, the confirmation of minutes from the 11th of December 2018 and the 15th of January 2019. Could I have a councillor move and second? Thank you, Councillor Moran, seconded Councillor Hyde. Um, are there any corrections to the minutes? There being no corrections, I ask you, uh, ask you now to vote in favour of the motion to confirm the minutes. All in favour, thank you. That is carried. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, item seven, um, there were three deputations on the list, listed on the agenda this evening in uh, relation to Hurdle Square Trees. However, uh, Libby Hicks Maitland and Matthew Kennedy have both withdrawn from speaking this evening. Um, Mrs. Mary Ellen Griffiths, uh, sorry, Ms. Mary Ellen Griffiths, could you please come forward and address the council for up to five minutes? Thank you, Lord Mayor and councillors, for this opportunity to speak this evening on behalf of those who signed this petition dated the 13th of September 2018, requesting that council rescind its decision of the 24th of July 2018 and thus retain the two healthy desert ash trees outside 2 to 6 and 12 to 14 Hurtle Square. This petition is presented to Council by owners and residents of eight of the nine apartments in 2 to 6, five of the six apartments in 12 to 14, and four of the six apartments in 16 to 18 Hurdle Square. Since this petition was submitted to Council, two further owners who were not able to sign in time have given their verbal support. 
Councillors will be aware that an earlier document was submitted to Council as a petition from 12 to 14 Hurtle Square residents requesting that Council remove two desert ash trees in the northeastern quadrant of Hurtle Square. The petition requested that new trees be planted to ensure a standard height and growth and to enhance the panoramic vista. Owners and residents of 12 to 14 have asked me to stress tonight to Council that the July 2018 petition was in fact not from 12 to 14 Hurtle Square. These owners drew the attention of uh, uh, drew the attention of both former Councillor Alex Antic and Council Admin to this fact. They have repeated their request that the July petition be corrected to show the addresses of the people who actually lodged the petition. The Council's own Section 270 review, quoted by Councillor Martin in committee on Tuesday the 22nd of January 2019, confirmed our view that the July 2018 petition was flawed. The July petition was rather a survey circulated by letterbox drop as an anonymous note seeking support to remove the trees. A number of owners disregarded the note. Others responded, believing it to be a survey, not a formal petition to council. A number of signatories to the July 2018 petition were neither owners nor residents in Hurdle Square. A number of owners, including five of the nine owners in two to six Hurdle Square who were not in residence in mid-2018, received no communication from anyone until my phone call about the imminent removal of the trees following a Council Works Department letterbox drop giving three days notice of removal and then a suggestion of a petition to save the trees. None of us had any inkling of the June 2018 admin report that recommended inter alia that the trees in question were healthy, nor that Council decided on the 24th of July 2018 to ignore both its own policy on tree succession planting and also the advice of its arborists and staff to retain the trees in question. This deputation would like to assure Council of our strong support for Council's established policy and procedures concerning tree removal and succession planting, and the role of the arborist in giving expert advice concerning the health of trees and the circumstances when trees should be removed. We hope that the removal of old trees and the selection processes for new trees will include active consideration of fauna habitat issues. Native birds are a vital part of healthy biodiversity in our fine Adelaide parklands. We also wish to express our appreciation to Council for its clearly stated policy of continuing the greening of the cityscape that is such a valued aspect of life in the city of Adelaide, and especially for its recent work in enhancing Hurtle Square as a green oasis in the midst of a rapidly expanding city residential area. We hope that Council will retain in our city squares the quintessential vistas and treescapes of the Adelaide parklands and keep to a minimum their transformation into formal gardens with an undue emphasis on sculpted trees and shrubs and geometric garden beds filled with petunias. Various media reports during the recent hot weather spells has, have emphasised the benefits that medium density, multi-species treescapes, such as we have in Hurdle Square, provide in terms of air quality and the lowering of ambient temperatures in cities. We ask that Council adhere to its policy on tree planting and preserve these two healthy desert ash trees as a contribution to the well-being of our city, its residents and its daily visitors. Thank you, Ms. Mary Ellen Griffiths, for your deputation. Members, that takes us to item 8.1, which is the petition for desert ash trees for the square. Uh, can I have a mover to uh, Councillor Moo? Thank you, Councillor Moran, and a seconder, Councillor Sims. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to the motion? I do not. Councillor Sims? 
Um, does anyone else wish to speak to the motion? No, Councillor, would you like to sum up? Sum up. Uh, can I now ask you to vote, please? Those in favour, raise your hands. Thank you. Those against, that is carried. <coughs> Uh, takes us to item 9.1, which are the recommendations of the committee of the 22nd of January 2019. Um, councillors, I'm going to seek a motion for each of the recommendations in the report. Recommendation one is the bike share on street activity permit application. Could I have a mover? Uh, Councillor Donovan, a seconder, thank you. Councillor Moran. Councillor Donovan, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Moran. Um, does anyone else wish to speak to the motion? No. Councillor Donovan, do you wish to sum up? No. No, there being no further debate, if we can now vote with a show of hands. Those in favour, those against, that is carried. Thank you, councillors. Recommendation number two is the incentive package to reinstate front gardens through a parking permit scheme. Uh, moved by Councillor Martin. Seconded, please. <laughs> Motion. Sorry? I wish to amend the recommendation. Oh, okay. Do you have the amendment, Councillor? Um, yes, Lord Mayor, and look, I apologise. It was drafted at five o'clock. Um, it is very simple. It is as printed, and uh, then it should read uh, and requests administration prepare a report. on the possibility of introducing an incentive package to reinstate front gardens on residential properties. Seconded by Councillor Moran. Councillor Martin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, uh, briefly, the origins of this proposal um, uh, was or were to encourage voluntarily uh, historic and um, uh, listed, heritage listed property owners who'd removed front gardens um, to replace them with uh, often concrete parking to revert back to a garden. Uh, it was argued at the time that the heritage values of individual properties, but more importantly, the, the value of the streetscape in the city of Adelaide would be enhanced where concrete car parks were replaced with what was there originally or as close as possible, that is garden. And it, it went and still does go to the heart of our reputation as a heritage place. And as a member of the uh, former council, Lord Mayor, you remember that we had a particular focus on heritage because it was so under a threat in North Adelaide, particularly during the term of the council. Um, but we as a council even went to the trouble of calculating the value of heritage to the tourism economy, to the visitor economy in the city of Adelaide. And if you remember, that study for the first time identified that heritage tourism, the value of people seeing historic buildings and heritage buildings, whether they're residential or whether they're commercial, the value of that is about half a million dollars a year. That is the consequence of this city being proactive about its uh, heritage. So that was the thinking behind this proposal. Um, now, the example of cost and effort involved, however, was, um, I think, uh, uh, accidentally, unintentionally compromised um, by the use of Melbourne Street as an example, because Melbourne Street's a commercial area, and the report that we were presented with talked about all kinds of commercial outcomes. That's not what I'm talking about, and in fact, this amendment here uh, seeks to talk about residential properties, not about commercial properties. And we're talking about, therefore, individual properties in the city in Wright Street, or we could be talking about a property in Stanley Street in North Adelaide. But those are individual properties where there is a benefit to reinstating the garden that is uh, likely to accrue to the owner and also to the city of Adelaide. 
non-commercial properties, which are complex, which involve very difficult decisions and can be incredibly disruptive. Now this uh, motion asks the administration to go back and have a look at it through that lens, still a voluntary scheme, still associated with the heritage incentive scheme, and incorporated into it that very simple notion that a property giving up curb, that is a driveway, um, formerly used for parking, giving that up would be reinstated to curbing and would be parking that would be available to that residential property. It's a fairly simple proposal and it's one that's governed by, I suggest, all of the rules potentially of the Heritage Incentive Scheme. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Moran, I'll reserve my right with Does anyone else wish to speak? Councillor, uh, sorry, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Can I just ask a question, if that's all right? Um, just with regards to this, obviously there's, we have a report that was already prepared and we noted at the committee. Um, is the intention of the mover for this to be funded from the Heritage Incentive Scheme? Or is this, is this the intention? Um, do you mind adding those words in there? Because it reads to me at the moment that the administrative report report possibility introduction of an incentive package, it may be a new incentive package, I'm happy to support it if it's part of the Heritage Incentive Scheme Fund. Happy to accept that. Right. Um, Councillor Moran, as I say, do you happy to accept that amendment? Yes, I am. Thank you. And also, one more question, sorry. sorry. Uh, is this also only for heritage properties? My understanding is only for heritage right, properties, Councillor Martin. About heritage properties, but as you can understand, there are properties which are in the pipeline which are at present historic properties. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, contrib so contrib we, contributing items. Do you want to amend? Because it also doesn't include any heritage discussions. So I requested the Strategic Bureau Report on the possibility of producing an incentive package to be funded through the Heritage Incentive Scheme to reinstate front gardens on heritage listed residential properties? Uh, happy to have it, but they wouldn't qualify under the Heritage Incentive Scheme, would they? Oh yeah, that's true. No, that's, that's enough then. No, that's perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, members, I need you to vote on that amendment, a uh, variation to the amendment. So those in favour to accept the variation. Thank you. That was carried. Councillor Moran. Um, yes, I think having had a look around after we discussed it before, there are not very many of these properties. Most of the properties that have their front garden, this is my husband's rooms, are commercial properties. Um, the people that did this often did so because of, we had the constrictive um, residential parking permit system that um, often um, if they had two cars, they'd, they'd turn their front garden in the back garden too. Now, we, now we're re-looking at that and it doesn't necessarily mean you, if you can supply ECAD a little bit of your garden to be a car park, that doesn't preclude you anymore. So the need for people to do this is much lessened. Um, also, by doing this and encouraging people to do it, and nothing encourages like a bit of an incentive, but as I said, there are very, very few properties um, in North Adelaide that I can see that would warrant this. And obviously, the people who haven't done it, they need a little bit of an incentive to do it. Uh, while also we're doing our bluestone curbing up in North Adelaide, it's important that if people can stop the crossovers, that they do so now and we can reinstate the bluestone cur curbing. Another plus is the uh, reduced number of crossovers, um, makes cycling down our residential streets much safer. So um, I think it is worth another look at this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Do other, any other councillors wish to speak to that? Councillor Martin, would you like to sum up? Summed up all right. Okay, those in favour of the amended motion, thank you. Uh, that is carried. Uh, that takes us, members, to recommendation three the Heritage Incentives. Uh, scheme allocation of 50,000. Uh, moved by Councillor Moran, seconded by Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to it? I reserve my right. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Reserve my right. Uh, members? No. Back to you, Councillor Moran. 
Uh, yes, I recommend this um, motion to the very sensible expenditure of our, our uh, um, world class heritage incentive scheme. Thank you, Councillor Moran. I uh, will now ask you to vote. Those in favour? Thank you, those against? That is carried. Recommendation four was the City of Sydney and Melbourne Planning and Development Initiatives. May I have a councillor move that, please? Councillor Moran, seconded by Councillor Martin. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to the motion? Um, look, I, I commend this one again. Um, we always, as I, you and I and many other councillors uh, that have been on the council for a while have said that we really should keep track, close track of the planning changes in other cities. Our planning has been decimated by, by forces in the last government and we need to know how we can improve the planning system and reverse some of the trends, some of the negative trends, not some of the positive trends. Thank you. Councillor Moran, Councillor Martin. Uh, councillors, does anyone else wish to speak to the recommendation? No. Councillor Moran, back to you, Summer. Uh, Summer, Lord Mayor. Thank you. If you can please vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Recommendation number five is the 2018-19 grant uh, recommendations for rec and sport. Recreation and sport. Could I have a council move? Councillor Martin, a councillor second, Councillor Donovan. Uh, councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to the motion? Councillor Donovan. Any other councillors wish to speak to the motion? Councillor Martin, back to you. Thumbed up. Are those in favour by a show of hands? Those against, that is carried. Recommendation six, Adelaide Oval submission to select a committee. Could I have a councillor move? Councillor Sims in a seconder, please. Uh, Councillor Kerrin, Councillor Sims, did you want to speak to the motion? No. I'll resume. No. Councillor Kerrin? No. no. Any other councillors wish to speak? No. Councillor Sims, to sum up? Sum up. Those, uh, if we can vote, thank you. Those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Recommendation number seven is section 270 internal review of decision hurdle square tree replacement. I could have a councillor move. All oh, your hands all went up at the same time. Uh, okay. uh, councillor Hyde um, and seconded by uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak to the motion? Yes, just briefly, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I'll just say at the outset, obviously, I'm new to this place, um, but what a fascinating mess to waltz into. Um, I, I heard about it during the campaign, people talking about the trees at Hurdle Square, the trees at Hurdle Square, and, and I had to admit, I wondered what on earth they were talking about. But um, when it came down to it, I uh, did some digging, thankfully some constituents were more than happy to enlighten me on what happened. Um, and it seems that there was an overarching um, and unfortunately catastrophic failure of a number of elements, both of uh, the chamber um, and also in some part on administration. Um, and it turns out that uh, there was some controversy around the original petition presented, which um, was obviously the subject of that deputation earlier today. Um, but also council didn't necessarily conduct very thorough consultation with the residents um, on the matter. Uh, and then the councillors in the chamber uh, were acting on this petition that there was some controversy about. Um, and lo and behold, we ignored the arborists' advice and we ignored our own standing policy. Um, and so we're here now to fix that mess. Um, and uh, I'm very pleased to be moving this motion. Um, I commend it to the Chamber and I would just say, when in doubt, always please keep the trees. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, just a quick comment. Uh, look, I didn't support the, uh, the rescission put by Councillor Martin at the last meeting, specifically regarding Section uh, 270 Internal Review. And my biggest issue was at the time is, uh, which was explained to me by administration before, uh, just before the meeting, that by rescinding the motion, we're basically going back to zero ground. So no decision of council. And I'm assuming from now on, from a section 270 internal review process, that any deputation, sorry, any petition will receive, that will be our process to consult. Is that correct? Because that's the advice of the report. CEO, would you like to take it? Through me, yes, that would be the case. So the advice of administration subject to any petitions presented to council after would be that there's an element of consultation because that's what the review says. Just want to be clear on that. Yep, yeah, that's that's the that's the that's the way we go forward. All right, well that's perfect. But with that, I'll, I'm happy to support the decision motion. Thank you, CEO. Um, would any other councillors like to speak to the motion, Councillor Sims? 
Just to uh, add my um, voice to uh, to this, uh, like many of the councillors who have already spoken, I too have been concerned um, about the uh, practice of removal of perfectly healthy trees. Um, I think Councillor Hyde makes a good point that um, hopefully we can learn from this. Uh, you know, I always believe to err is human, to persist in error is uh, devilish. Um, so hopefully we'll make sure we don't do it again. But let's keep the trees when in doubt. Thank you. Just a question, sorry, just to follow up to clarify on Councillor Abiyad's point. Are you saying that if we rescind this and we get another petition, we are then going to go to consultation? CEO. Through Lord Mayor, no, there's no commitment at this time for Council to do anything. Should Council wish to go forward and ask administration to go through the process again, we would undertake the consultation process at that time, but we've not been given that direction. So there's no obligation if we rescind this and we then receive another petition, there's no obligation for any further action, including there's no obligation for us to go through a consultation process if we get another petition. That's real, Mayor, that is correct. Okay, thank you. Um, just to, just a brief comment. I, I would um, just hope that in the in the pro uh, in, in, in the process of making this decision, I'm just a little wary that we're not uh, necessarily affirming as a principle that uh, if trees are, are healthy in quotation marks, they cannot and should not be removed. Uh, it may be the case down the track, and I'm sure it's been the case many times. Obviously, has been the case. The trees are. Uh, can be changed uh, when they're technically an arborist may say that these trees are healthy, um, but they may well change because there is a decision by the residents that uh, a change is warranted. Um, trees can have various stages of healthy. They can be healthy and very big and bountiful. They can be healthy but quite insipid as well. Um, so I would just ask a caution, Lord Mayor, that members keep in mind that we 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 don't necessarily need to affirm any kind of principle that a tree must stay in the ground uh, simply because it is alive. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Kerrett. Uh, would any other member like to speak to this motion? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I just sum up by saying I think this is the longest discussion I've ever been involved in that is actually about doing nothing. Thank you. <laughs> you Thank you, Councillor Hyde. I'll now put the motion to those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Oh, I've got four years, Councillor Hart. Um, a recommendation number eight, City of Adelaide response to the local Labor government reform package. Could I have a councillor please move? Thank you, Councillor Moran. A seconder? Councillor Sims. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to the motion? No, thank you. It's very clear. Thank you, Councillor Sims. No, does any other member wish to speak to the motion? No, in that case, if we could, uh, sorry, Councillor Moran, would you like to sum up? I'll sum up, okay. Thank you. Uh, if we could now vote those in favour, those against, that motion is carried. Uh, this takes us to item 9.2, which is the advice of the Adelaide Parklands Authority from the 24th of January uh, 2019 for Council to note. If I could have a mover, Councillor Sims, and a seconder. Uh, Councillor Dr Donovan. Councillor Sims, did you wish to speak? Reserve my right. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. No, do any other councillors wish to speak? Councillor Kerrer. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, just really an observation and a question for administration. Um, I understand there's presently uh, work being undertaken on guidelines for public monuments. Um, that is a public art policy and I think operating guidelines, I'm a bit of correct on the name of that. And that these guidelines will be finalised in a few months. Um, a monument that is subject of this advice from APLA is scheduled to come before Council before uh, these guidelines are put in place. Um, I think it would be best if the guidelines were determined um, before Council makes its final decision uh, on, on a monument as a matter of principle, uh, or we, we're potentially setting a precedent over, for example, uh, the Riverbank 
uh, of the Torrens and Victoria Drive, um, a matter of weeks or a month before the guidelines are set down. Um, so can the administration give uh, an undertaking to discuss the parameters of the policy um, uh, in a workshop for members to be uh, appraised and uh, to provide their input uh, into what is actually a really important issue because we're talking about uh, potentially substantial footprints over currently green space. Councillor Kerr, that's not the uh, subject of the motion before you. It's to note the advice from APLA. Yes, and, and this is really just a question to administration relating to a matter that is part of the advice from APLA. Um, if that is somehow, if this is an inappropriate uh, setting for it, and it's, it's regarding the Vietnamese Boat okay. Monument, which is in the advice. Uh, so, CEO. It, it, so, sorry, Lord Mayor, is, it, is this not the correct? No, because this. So the interest? motion before you is actually noting the advice from our part. Yes. So, and uh, look, I'll go to the CEO so to respond to that question. Yeah, clear. Could you respond to? Uh, through the presiding member, our public art and memorials policy has been under re review for about a year, um, but before we were able to um, bring into this new council uh, what the emerging themes are within that framework, we have two existing um, pieces of memorial that have been underway for a couple of years and so are being assessed against the current um, policy um, guidelines. Um, so, um, as, a, as the Lord Mayor indicated, this is just um, advice to note from APLA. In March, um, taking on board some feedback at APLA, a revised proposal will be brought through to the committee um, for committee to um, take a deeper look um, at the uh, memorial. Um, and later that month, um, the uh, first look at the emerging themes from a revised public art policy um, and memorial guideline will also be workshopped with committee. So um, our um, advice would be to still consider um, these two memorials that have been in train for at least a couple of years under the existing policy at this point. Thank you. Did anyone else wish to speak to the advice from APLA? Councillor Martin. Yeah, look, just ever so briefly, Lord Mayor. Um, look, there, there is merit in what uh, Councillor Kira is proposing. This is the first time, I think, uh, that this matter has been in front of Council, and Councillor Kira is just saying, yes, hang on. Councillor Martin, I think it's been answered in terms I, of. I understand it's been uh, answered. Um, I did hear that, but the answer didn't address the request, which was could we have a workshop? Could that be noted rather than not agreed? I think that was what uh, yeah. Councillor Kira was asking. Okay. I think, I think uh, sorry, I heard Dr. Uh, Director Mocha said there was a workshop in March. Uh, that is after the decision on this matter is resolved and Councillor Kira's point is, can we have the workshop first? Uh, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Am I, yeah, right, 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 yeah. Uh, I just need to find, is it, is it time sensitive? Both, both pieces of work have been in train for some time. My strong advice would be to continue assessing two memorials on your existing policy um, while you build your new policy. It could be some time before you have a new policy in place relating to public art and memorials. Councillor Moran. What if we don't like it? Is it all? Is it all too late? No, because no? there are significant um, parkland problems that need to be addressed with that large paved area, and I think that we would like to have come in at a slightly lower level than I think when it's all done. At this point, we're not debating the merits of the monument. We are noting the advice of our plan. Yeah. But when we, the question is, when will we? Will we better get in front of this? if the council deems to, wants to stop it. So through the CEO. Through the presiding member, um, yes, we heard feedback at APLA in relation to its setting and size. That feedback will be taken on board by the um, proponents along with the artist. Um, I expect they will be reconsidering the proposal that APLA considered um, and the report will come back to committee and then council for their input consideration um, in the first committee in March. That's the current timetable. Thank you. 
Councillor Sims. Just a brief question of clarification in that same vein, but relating to the uh, proposal around World Heritage listing for the parklands. Uh, will that also come to um, Council as a report for a future or uh, to a committee meeting in the future? It, it's one of the outcomes that's noted. It's one of the recommendations that we're noting. Yeah. From Do you like to ask that question? Yeah, it's really oh, it's intended that that will, that will occur. Yeah, that's, that's proposed. Thank you. Um, did anybody else want to speak to the advice from our If not, I'll go back to Councillor Sims. Summer. Thank you. Uh, can I take that to the vote? Can I have a motion, please? Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Um, item 10, which I've just lost my agenda, one moment, which is my report. Uh, thank you, members. In recent weeks, um, the elected members have been considering our strategic priorities for this term of council and how we work most effectively with each other, representing the best interests of our community. I thank the members for their input during these important sessions, which will form the foundation of our future strategic plan. Once again, the City of Adelaide proudly played host to the Tour Down Under with the Tour Village in Victoria Square, Tasmanianga, and Stage 1 starting from 88 O'Connell Street in North Adelaide, where I had the honour of firing the starter's gun, which was incredibly loud. In recent weeks, I've met with international representatives, including His Excellency uh, Monsieur uh, Christophe Penot, the Ambassador of France to Australia, where we discussed the French festival and how we can create the best celebration of Bastille Day in the city of Adelaide this coming year. I also met with Ms. Her uh, Lanjing, the new Consul General of the People's Republic of China, about how we can work together in supporting international students. Um, and I thank Councillor Ho for his attendance at that meeting. In keeping with the international theme, I also met with uh, Elizabeth Day, the South Australian State Director from the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade to connect and discuss trade opportunities. Among the many meetings, uh, I met with several state and federal parliamentary representatives to discuss the City of Adelaide, including Mr. Steve Georgianis MP, the federal member for Hindmarsh, the Honourable Rachel Sanderson MP, the state member for Adelaide, the Honourable David Spears MP, South Australian Minister for Environment and Water, and Mr. Peter Malinaskis, MP, Leader of the State Opposition. I also met with Mayor Amanda Wilson of the City of Holfast Bay. Uh, community safety is high on Council's agenda and I recently met with uh, the Assistant Commissioner Paul Dixon from the South Australian Police to discuss Hindley Street and community safety um, and how we can continue to work with Save Hall. Uh, Council recently commenced the upgrade of Gawler Place, uh, an important infrastructure investment which was celebrated with the sod turning ceremony and I thank Councillor Knoll for taking part also. Over the weekend, we celebrated Australia Day in the city and it was my honour to conduct the Australia Day Citizenship Ceremony in this chamber on Friday last week, welcoming 47 new citizens from 17 countries. And I thank Councillor Abraham Zadeh for uh, being MC on that occasion. We also recognised the remarkable people who are making significant impact on our communities through our Australia Day Awards. And I once again wish to congratulate Citizens of the Year, Tim Seymour Smith and Mike Chalmers, <coughs> co-founders of Cafe Outside the Square. Our Young Citizen of the Year, Amber Cronin, the co-founder of the Mill Collective, and the Hart Street Centre's Walk a Mile in Our Boots for being recognised as our Community Event of the Year. I offer my congratulations to the Australia Day Council of South Australia uh, for the smoking ceremony on Australia Day morning, for the heartfelt presentation by Christine Wanganin and Uncle Moggy's beautiful welcome to country. It was a very moving event. Uh, that was followed later in the day by the uh, Australia Day parade in the city along King William Street, which had over 100 community groups participating, and then the concert and fireworks in Elder Park. Thank you. Uh, councillors, could I have a mover and a second for the motion to receive my report? Deputy Lord Mayor, um, Councillor Moran, if you could vote those in favour. Thank you, that is carried. Item 11 on tonight's agenda are the reports from council members. Could I have a councillor move? Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor and a seconder. Councillor Hyde. Uh, 
Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to it at all? Councillor Hyde. <coughs> no. Did any members wish to speak to the report? Councillor Martin. Yeah, briefly, Lord Mayor. Look, I just wanted to uh, acknowledge the work of the Australia Day Committee for what was a singularly successful uh, parade, which I most councillors were invited. Um, and I also want to pay tribute to Councillor Abia and his committee um, for arranging for the Ghana people to lead uh, the Australia Day Parade for the first time ever with the uh, Change the Date banner. That was a singularly um, courageous thing for the committee to do. I acknowledge that um, and I foreshadow um, that at some stage I'll be asking the Reconciliation Committee of Council to consider how we might begin that discussion that the committee so uh, so courageously began for all of South Australia uh, on Saturday. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Would any other councillor like to speak to the report? If not, I'll go back to Deputy Lord Mayor. Some of them, some of If you now fight, those in favour, show of hands. Thank you, those against, that is carried. Item 12, um, reports for council. I have one report, item 12.1, which is the West Franklin Stage 1 Racine Land Management Agreement. If I could have a mover, Councillor Ho. Oh, and sorry. Oh, sorry. I didn't have Sorry, Franklin is my client and the director is my friend. Thank you, Councillor Ho. And I need you to clear, oh, sorry. I need you to clear the conflict of interest as well. Uh, are you going to leave the chamber, Councillor? Come uh, Are you going to stay? Well, I. You have to say what the count. What the? Well, my ex-husband is involved with the project, so is that? You're on good terms, as well. <laughs> we are, but. <laughs> 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 um, sorry. Yes. Uh, Councillor, I'm on advice of course. It's, it, it's um, yeah. your call whether you stay in the chamber, but thank you for advising us for that this evening. I receive advice and um, it's a perceived conflict but I can I can choose to stay if I like and um, I can vote if I want to. Yeah. So, so are you choosing to stay? I'm Councilor? choosing to stay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, councillors, could I have a mover? Thank you. <coughs> Councillor Moran and a seconder. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to them? Um, no, I don't, Lord Mayor. Fairly straightforward. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, councillors. No, um, go back to the mover, Councillor Moran. Summed up. Summed up. If I could ask you please to vote. Those in favour, those against, that is carried. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just ask Councillor Ho to come back in. Thank you. Item 12.2 is the Adelaide Parklands Authority Annual Report to be received. Would I have a Councillor please move? Thank you, Councillor Sims. And a seconder? Councillor Martin. Councillor Sims, did you wish to speak? No, so, Councillor Martin. Oh, may I ask two quick questions? Um, that arise as a result of the uh, lovely report of 
these two nice pictures, big bold print, it's good. Um, in, in September 2017, which is you know, almost a year and a half ago, APLA and I think Council also uh, supported a consultation on a draft lease with the Adelaide Comets uh, Football Club for facilities which were to be constructed at Park 24. Um, that building is now being substantially completed. The report doesn't say whatever happened. Was that consultation finished? Did the lease ever come back to Adler? Did it ever come back to council? It just doesn't say. CEO. Three old men. We might take that on notice if we can and feed back the information to council. Okay, and the report also says, and you might want to take this on notice too, uh, that um, uh, there was to be a study and a design concept for parking facilities and landscaping uh, completed in 2018 and presented to APLA and Council, but uh, it's not come to Council. Did it come to APLA as well? CEO. Sri Lomé, could you just clarify car parking for what purpose? Uh, for uh, the Adelaide Comets Park 24 proposal. They were separate paragraphs and separate parts of the report but they're just, they say this is going to happen and there's no record of it happening. Likewise, we'll come back with information on that as well. Thank you. Uh, did any other councillors wish to speak to the motion? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Sims to sum up. Thank you. If we could now, those in favour, raise your hands. Those against, that is carried. Um, item 12.3 is uh, the appointment of the official partner of the Lord Mayor, a report to note. If I could have a move, please. Councillor Abrahams in it, and a seconder, Councillor Hyde. Oh, Sorry? <laughs> 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 Councillor Abrahams is did you wish to speak to the motion? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Just some encouraging words. It's uh, great to see Mr. Greg Mitchell uh, appointed to this position. And uh, uh, just like the other members, I'm looking forward to uh, 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 Mr. Greg Mitchell getting um, getting to know the community a little bit more and being involved in his particular interests, which were men's health, art in the city, and cycling. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak? No. Any other councillors wish to speak to the? Councillor Martin. Yeah, just a question, Lord Mayor. Did this happen previously? That is to say, was the council required to approve the previous? This is. It's, so it's standing. It always comes through. It's a, it's a standing procedural report. Okay. And uh, the report also says that council will, will assist administratively. Does that mean that the first bloke gets the Lady Esther Jacobs room and the private? Uh, my understanding is that the first bloke does have access to the Lady Esther Jacobs room and also some um, administrative support. Good, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? No? <laughs> Councillor Abrazim, <laughs> would you like to sum up? Sum up. Sum up, thank you. Um, those in favour by a show of hands. Those against, thank you. That is carried. I'll let said husband know. <laughs> we now get on to uh, item 13, which is questions on notice. Councillor Martin. Happy to accept the discretion. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor. That will take us to. Um, Councillor 14, are there any, uh, sorry, item 14, are there any questions without notice? Councillor Corus. Sorry, I have a question to the administration in regards to um, the motion that we went through on the, um, I think it's the 11th of December in regards to ADA O'Connell when we're going to open up as a car park. I so wonder if I can have some clarification on that. CEO. Three, Lord Mayor. Steve, could you respond to that, please? 
through you, Lord Mayor. Um, Councillor, we've undertaken from the motion, I think it's the 11th of December, as you said, but we undertook um, from there to bring a report back to Council. I think the motion actually stipulated um, by the end of February, and we've actually got it scheduled in for the 5th of March meeting, just simply because of timing and capacity through Christmas period. The actual car park component didn't have a deadline until the end of February. It had immediately. Oh, beg your pardon. Yeah, beg your pardon. So you are correct. That was the other um, concept plan in relation yes, to the box right. park concept. Yeah. yeah. No, beg your pardon. So, as we mentioned in the response in the motion on notice response on the night that there was a temporary DA available for activation of the car park during um, temporary activation events. They had to be very specifically in relation to the DA received about events that were happening on the site itself. Um, in the interim to that, we've actually taken on a bigger body of work to say to take the car park into a larger scale and in response to feedback from yourself, how we would activate it on a more permanent basis to provide parking capacity within North Adelaide and then bring that back. As I said, that schedule would come back on the 5th of March, that particular report. Okay, so it's coming in together on the 5th of March and together with the other um, That's correct. As, as one or as separate? They're, they're two separate reports at the moment, but obviously they are um, interrelated, the two reports. The body of work we're doing at the moment is around what capacity we could generate, the nature of the build and how a car park would be put together. Um, there's quite a spectrum of opportunity in relation to how the car park could be provisioned um, and there's quite a difference in costs associated with it. So we really do need to ascertain Council's um, desire to progress with this item and also in relation to the development application that would need to be undertaken and the implications of the development policy that's in place at the moment. Okay. Are there any other questions without notice? Thank you, members. That takes us to item number 15. There are four motions on notice. Item 15.1, Councillor Sims. Do we please move the motion you're placed on notice? Thank you, Lord Mayor. I move that Council request that administration prepare a report on the potential to utilise participatory budgetary processes for the 2019-20 budget, with particular regard to the experience of the City of Melbourne. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Moran. Councillor Simmons. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I'll speak very briefly on this because I, I'm aware of the fact that I've got three um, motions coming down the line tonight, so I don't want to take up too much of the uh, meeting's time. The uh, impetus for me putting this forward was uh, thinking about our upcoming budget process and having a look at um, best practice uh, interstate and, and in other cities. Um, I do think that council administration does a good job in terms of uh, consulting with the community, but there is always uh, room to look at how we may improve that. Um, and uh, that got me looking at what's being done in um, the city of Melbourne, and they used uh, participatory budgetary processes um, when developing their financial plan. Um, I've been deliberately non-prescriptive around how that might be used here in the city of Adelaide. Really, all I'm asking for is um, our administration to go away, do a report and look at how we may utilise it um, and present some options for us to consider down the track. Obviously, the budget's coming up pretty soon. We may be limited in terms of what we can do during this budget cycle, but I think it's worthwhile looking at. In particular, I do want to draw um, members' attention to the evaluation of the engagement process in the City of Melbourne. That process engaged over 600 people. Part of that was a people's panel, which comprised of 43 selected Melbournians. That was uh, residents, business owners, students. The panel met six times. It came up with 11 different recommendations. Um, in terms of the satisfaction of participants, it was rated at 96%, so pretty high in terms of a um, public participation. Um, and uh, it was also considered to be really good value for money. Um, and uh, in practice with uh, good community engagement criteria and a range of other standards. So, as I say, I have an open mind for how we might use that here in Adelaide, but I think it, it's a piece of work um, worth commissioning and that's why I put this forward. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Moran. Thank you. Uh, councillors, would anybody else like to speak to the motion? Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Just a question of administration first. Um, so, I understand there was a bit of a discussion about this at an earlier stage. Do we do we have any information with regards to the costs um, associated with putting this on in Melbourne? I know there was a significant cost associated. I can't remember who I spoke to. I spoke about it. CEO. 
Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor, I've been told before that it's about $150,000 to undertake this process. But what we would do in this report, we would actually get the full details of that and provide it to you. Look, because the current process, as I see it, um, and I'll just speak quickly, and I'm sort of still trying to make up my mind and how the debate will go on this, but um, the current process as we have it, we the council puts the budget together as elected members, and that budget gets put out for public consultation. There's a process at which um, our constituents can attend two separate forums in council. We've had some of those forums sometimes set up at public spaces outside the city of Adelaide. We've received feedback on an input on the budget process. Um, and then we deliberate on the outcome and then that's the budget. Um, I see our role as elected members, especially that we voted on a very small number of people that vote us in. It's our role to engage through a budget process. This is one of the most important processes of council. We have a full picture and a full understanding of the budget, the requirement, the experience, and also the constant discussion with administration on what can work and what cannot work. I think it would be very hard to bring uh, members of the public into a participatory style um, discussion uh, without them understanding the full picture of how the council operates. It's our job as elected members to be able to do that. So look, I don't want to create more reports and more work. I'm very happy with the current process we have. Um, and with that in mind, I probably will not be supporting this motion. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Koros, did you wish to speak? Uh, I think uh, Councillor Abbey, I clarified a lot of the things that I, that I wanted to ask, but I just want to ask a question. So, in order to do this, we it would cost money to do so, is that correct? So, yeah. Sorry. Through you, Lord Mayor, to, to provide a report to Council, it can be done internally. We will have conversations with other capital cities that, that have undertaken this process, such as the City of Melbourne. So, the report to Council is, is a administrative cost only. Right. To implement the actual participatory budgeting process, um, subsequent to that, I think I can get it right, sub subsequent to that would come at a cost and that would be a cost that would be determined by the council depending on the model and the extent of the model that's, that's applied. How, however, at present, because I mean, I'm new to council, sorry, so I'm just asking the questions, at present there is a form of community engagement in the, in the budget, is that right? Yep, through you, Lord Mayor. There is definitely a, a, com a community engagement process that we undertake each budget cycle um, <coughs> that is to comply with our statutory obligations. We undertake that plus some, um, and that is what has been practised to date. Council can always seek to extend that or, or apply a different methodology, and that's, I think, the, the conversation that's being put forward. So the way that we've been running the budget for over a long time, it's been working successfully and, and can, the community have been engaging with it and it hasn't involved in any way? Is, is, there, is, there, is there any reason why Councillor Sims is bringing this into the chamber today? I just don't understand. With um, point of order, this is part of the debate now. And can, they can't possibly ask that. Oh, okay, That's sorry. I'm happy to address that when I close the debate. Oh, okay. All right, no worries. Thank Councilor you. Councillor Coros. Okay. Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, perhaps for the um, new members, because it was a very pertinent point that um, Councillor Kerr has brought out. No, the current system doesn't work very well. We hold a lot of public meetings. Um, we advertise them broadly uh, and very few people turn up, if any, sometimes. We've actually had them all out. We have, we have a lot of staff time. We have to do this for our st statutory, to, statutory requirements. But to answer your question, it is hard to get people terribly interested in a council budget and it's hard to get them out after work. And we have for many years tried to work out how we could get more people involved because they're pretty involved after the budget when they work out what's in it, but not so interested in before. Uh, so I think that's what this is what definitely what Councillor Sims is trying to do. Melbourne did have a very successful um, uh, way of uh, getting people involved in the budget. Uh, our budget um, consultation does not come cheaply either. Um, so $150,000 for a very large city like Melbourne would be considerably cheaper for a much smaller compact city such as Adelaide. Um, however, I think it is very pertinent that we look at other cities and see, and particularly the ones that have done it well, um, the report will outline options for cost and we can pick and choose there. But to not look for better ways to engage our community is, is to fail because uh, they are absolute, um, with all the goodwill of the staff, 
all the goodwill of the councillors who sometimes are asked to go and in other years are asked not to go because of the influence that everybody works really hard to get community engagement and it is an absolute abject failure. So it's very important that we look at other states to see what they're doing, even just to get some hints and just adjust our methodology. Thank you. Any other speakers? Councillor Martin and Councillor Hyde. Oh, look, just uh, to Councillor Moran's uh, point, um, perhaps I could uh, uh, help new members by explaining that there's a statutory obligation. That we have a special council meeting at which the budget is um, uh, subject to questioning and addresses from members of the community. At uh, the last meeting, I can't remember whether we had one or two speakers, but it fell well short of a one hour statutory period. And I remember the Lord Mayor saying to the one or two guests who were there, keep talking, keep talking. We've got to be here for another hour. Now, I recall I had three cups of tea and about half a dozen biscuits. Um, and at the end of it all, we were just exhausted by this lack of consultation of this flawed process by which people didn't really understand what was going on and in fact that's the way much of consultation seems not to work in this council um, we invite people to participate they don't participate they're not interested and at the end of it all they end up very unhappy because they didn't know what was coming uh, any measure that any councillor proposes um, to increase the knowledge of what we're doing, to educate ratepayers about how processes happen and to provide them with real opportunity to come up with proposals for their street, uh, for their part of the city, for the city as a whole. Any of those are welcome in my view and I think we should be doing all that we can to be as innovative as possible. Yes, I will support this, um, whatever the cost, and I'm assuming it's a fairly moderate cost, whatever the cost, it's worth it, so that people can participate in this city. Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Just a question. Um, could such a model as this replace or, or fulfil, rather, our statutory obligations, or are we going to have to do this and still sit through a pointless special general meeting? Richard CEO. Through you, Lord Mayor, we are required by the Local Government Act to hold a public meeting specifically to deal with the budget, so it would be in addition to that requirement. Councillors, are there any other debate? I think you'll go back to Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor, and I, I thank um, councillors for their comments. Just to um, clarify for elected members, this is really just asking for a report to do some work uh, on behalf of our, our administration, put together some options for us to consider. Um, I agree with the comments made by Councillor, um, Councillors Moran and, and Councillor Martin. Um, you know, during my previous period on this council, it certainly wasn't for lack of trying on behalf of our administration, who put in a lot of time and effort trying to get community buy-in. The reality is very few people were um, being actively engaged. And um, that leads me to think, well, let's look at how we can do this differently. Uh, we deal with some challenging issues through our budget process and anything that we can do to improve the intelligence that we have available to us, I think we should look at. It's a very brave council that says, I don't wanna hear what the community has to say, or um, I think we've got all of the answers. Um, so I'd encourage elected members to look at this. This is an opportunity to improve buying from our community and um, really to look at best practice and, and what's happening in other cities around the country. Um, there's always room to do it uh, better. And um, I, I really encourage people to, to look at this and, and look at this as an opportunity to improve our democracy at the local level. Thank you, Councillor Sims. I'll ask you to vote on the motion. Those in favour? Those against? <coughs> Sorry, those against, if you can put your hands up in so um so that's lost. Thank you. Division. Division. Those members voting in favour of the motion, please rise.
Councillor Moran, Councillor Kerr, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Martin, Councillor Sims. That's declared against. Uh, Councillor 5.2, Councillor Sims. Try my luck again, Lord Mayor. Um, this one is, uh, this motion relates to a disclosure of um, political party memberships and donations. I move that council notes the state government will soon be reviewing the Local Government Act, supports the disclosure of political party memberships and donations received above the value of $500 by candidates seeking election to local council on an online register before commencement of the voting period, requests that the Lord Mayor write to the local government minister detailing council's support for this reform and encouraging the government to consider this as part of its review of the Local Government Act. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Seconded by Councillor Moran. Thank you. Lord Mayor, this motion comes about um, as a result of the uh, local election. There was considerable uh, interest in the election and uh, political party memberships and ties of candidates seeking office. And that's not new. That was certainly the case when I stood for um, election previously. Uh, there is considerable interest in the community about this. And for me, a really important principle in our democracy is transparency. And uh, currently under the Local <coughs> Government Act, candidates who are successfully elected are required to disclose their political party memberships uh, and also any donations they received after the election. What I'm proposing is a, a very modest reform, that is that you disclose before the election, not after. The reason for that being that our election shouldn't be some kind of lucky dip process when uh, voters don't know what they're going to get. Voters have a right to uh, know about the candidates, their political affiliations, who is bankrolling them. This information is pertinent to the political process. Um, I think you know one of the issues that we constantly lament in local government is the low turnout of voters because, um, of course, we have a, a, an optional voting system. And I think one of the reasons few people vote in a local government level is they don't know enough about their candidates. They don't know their background. They don't know who their backers are. They don't know what they stand for. And uh, this modest proposal would um, help bring about a change in that regard because it would ensure that we have that transparency from the outset. And I know that some members may argue, oh, you know, of course, there are other issues that we could look at in terms of reforming the Local Government Act. And, you know, I understand that. But this is an opportunity for us to strike when the iron is hot. There is considerable consensus in the community around this. Um, and uh, I'm hoping that council can come together and say, yes, let's call on the government to take some action in this regard. And if there are other issues we want to look at, we can do that down the line. But uh, let's really get the ball rolling and uh, take a strong position on transparency at a local level. Our election shouldn't be a lucky dip and um, the community has a right to have this information at their fingertips before they vote. Councillor Moran. Uh, councillors, Councillor Hyde. Yes, Lord Mayor, I have an amendment to make. So the notes that the State Government will be reviewing the Local Government Act, keep that, delete the next two points and replace with requests a workshop with elected members to prepare a submission to the Local Government Minister with regards to the Local Government Act and the City of Adelaide Act. Get you to read that again. Just a request a workshop with elected members to prepare a submission to the local government minister. To the yeah, to the local government minister uh, with regards to the local government act and the city of Adelaide Act. Uh, thank you, Councillor Hyde. Can I have a seconder? Is there a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Kouros. 
Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I just want to say that uh, I absolutely agree with everything that um, Councillor Sims has said uh, regarding transparency uh, and the like. Um, certainly, uh, I am a member of a political party and that played out during the campaign as it did for him. Um, uh, but I do think uh, we need to address all of this. So obviously the, the original motion um, would require you, Lord Mayor, uh, to write to the local government minister. Well. I can tell you I have a list as long as my arm of things that we should probably be doing better um, and I don't think it's best practice to require you to be writing to uh, uh, the minister every time we, we, have a, we have an idea. I think this level of detail in here and I, I support these measures and in, if, if this workshop gets up I will support these measures in the workshop um, and then in the chamber. But. Uh, I do think we need to flesh these out more thoroughly and not take uh, an ad hoc approach uh, when considering the, the uh, hopefully landmark reforms that are going to be coming uh, uh, before before the state parliament sometime soon. So, thank you. Did you wish to speak? Yes, I just want to say that I commend Councillor Sims for bringing this forward. And I, and I agree with Councillor Hyde in the respect that there are so many other things that we actually need to um, address with the, with with all of all of these issues. And so I believe that we we need to workshop them and uh, compile a comprehensive list of items um, uh, to bring forward. Thank you. Are there any other ca uh, members, Councillor Moran? I'm disappointed with this amendment. Um, it's not an ad hoc idea and there's not that many things we need to go through that it warrants a, a workshop. There's very few things. We're not governed by the Local Government Act, I believe. We're governed by the City of Adelaide Act. Um, we look at that fairly often. So to the new members, there's not a huge body of work. Sorry, have a moment, Councillor Moran. Just, just to clarify the point of fact yeah. on that, we're governed by both Acts. Yes, but the City of Adelaide goes over the top of the no. Local Government Act, doesn't it? No, no. The, it's the other way around. Other way around, okay. So um, uh, back to the point, I would say that there's not a large body of work to do that warrants a, a workshop. Um, this is something that the government um, has been asking for, um, both governments, Dreamfish government, this one, that uh, local candidates put their um, party membership, if they have any, or non-party membership, up front rather than um, have to declare it afterwards. There's nothing to be ashamed of being a party member and there's nothing to be ashamed of not being a party member. So I don't think it's a great reveal. If you're terribly ashamed of what your your party membership is, then this would really help. But I don't think anybody is. I think most people knew anybody's party membership. So what Councillor Sims has put up is that we specifically asked for that one, which is on the front of the agenda. I won't be bothering to come to a workshop on changes to the City of Adelaide Act or the Local Government Act. That's for the Local Government Association to feed that in and for our representative there. Um, this is a, a clear attempt to take the initiative from one councillor and give it to another councillor. And um, I don't think that's a good way for this council. Councillor Sims had this motion on the books for the entire uh, he's made it very clear what he was doing. Um, he has not been approached for another motion. And if this is the way this council is going to vote and behave, um, I think we've got a very long, long four years. If you had wanted Councillor Hyde to um, make changes and have a workshop, why didn't you put your own motion on? Why cannibalise this councillors? I hope I don't see any more behaviour like this. Thank you. Any other members like to speak? Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, one of the things I enjoy about uh, amendments is the debate that follows, during which the amender put forward, uh, puts forth the reasons for changing the motion. And all I've gleaned from the conversation so far is that there are lots of reasons, lots of things to talk about in terms of changes to the Local Government Act. I haven't heard one. The only one that's on the table is the one that Councillor Sims proposed, and it's about transparency, just as the last motion was, which by the way was defeated by the team, as this one will be defeated by the team. This is about transparency. It's pretty straightforward. It's a reasonable thing for this council to do, to expect that members nominating for council will declare who their political party will be. Now, I don't mind there being a workshop. Uh, I won't oppose it, I'll support it, because 
I'll be proposing that we go a step further and we talk about factions as well, because I think that would be a great conversation to have. Okay. Who's, who's a member of Team Thank Adelaide? Thank you, Councillor Martin, if we can stick to the motion. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord Mayor. That's a reasonable yeah. point. Factions, parties, they are all issues that should be before voters in the context of an election. And that's a good discussion to have at workshop. I'm, I'm part of the team that's not part of the team. I'm not a team. <laughs> uh, members, please. Thank you. Yeah. Councillor Martin, have you finished speaking to the amendment? Lord, Lord Mayor, let, let, let me say that. Councillor Kuros, Councillor Martin is speaking. I, Lord Mayor, I'm just trying to find the appropriate code here to describe the behaviour, but I wasn't there. But councillors. Councillor Martin, have you sp finished speaking to the amendment? Well, I was trying to, but I was cut off. Um, the people concerned weren't looking to the evidence. There was no opportunity for input. These are all things that you sent around to us. These were placed on our desks. Um, those things haven't happened. And that's the reason why we need to have a discussion about factions and how they operate and the way they operate to the detriment of council. So I'll be supporting this motion. I think it's a great idea. And I'll be proposing to the administration that during the course of the conversation, we talk about the operation of factions as well and declarations of them. Would anybody else like to speak to the amendment? Thank you, Councillor. Lord Mayor, if I could just um, uh, remind the members that uh, this is, it is about us as elected members, but it's also about our ratepayers as well. So it's about how we better engage them. It's about uh, whether if it's uh, voluntary voting or uh, a mandatory voting, whether if it's postal voting. So those sort of things need to be taken into account as well. So putting party membership and the donation and all that aside, let's try and focus on our, uh, on our ratepayers and uh, take that into account as well. Councillor Canal and then Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I think um, from where I sit is that one, as you can gather, we're all re relatively new, obviously uh, the majority of us, and giving opportunities to be, Moran, uh, to be better informed, be better part of conversations, so that we do understand more about how the motions are uh, created. And in this case, uh, to better understand all the opportunities we have to uh, influence the outcome of the review which the government is doing. And uh, it also then enables us to, with this understanding, uh, debate better and then come out with better, uh, you know, uh, opportunities and also with suggestions and things like that that we can uh, bring forward to the state government. And I don't think um, uh, I mean, our attempts now to try to uh, uh, you know, give more opportunity for us to have a, a word and to be able to understand things better is certainly wrong because it is a fairly straightforward. I mean, I'm happy to, to you know, state that I'm part of the Liberal Party. Thank you. Um, but that only makes me a member. It doesn't, it doesn't make me a member of parliament. And uh, my influence in that regard is not great. And I think here's an opportunity for us to just uh, really, you know, dig down, understand it better, come up with a few new things, and also engage with members in a way which is more constructive than just possibly banter over the over the desks. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Look, I don't support this uh, amendment, and the reason uh, I don't support it is for the reasons I outlined earlier, and and that is I actually think this is an opportunity for council to strike while the iron is hot in terms of taking action on uh, issues when there is clear consensus within the community. Um, you know, I can tell you the water cooler conversation of the recent council elections was, you know, who's member of what political party, what allegiances do they have, what affiliations do they have? And indeed, the minister, um, in his uh, comments on this topic recently in the media, recognised that there was huge community interest in this issue. I don't know why we wouldn't simply reach agreement around this, provide that feedback, and if in the future we want to consider a range of other options, of course we can do that. But uh, you know, I haven't heard suggestions for other changes that can be made. I do know that this is an issue that many members of the community and indeed many members of this council feel strongly about. Let's lock this in rather than having another workshop. Let's lock this in, show some leadership, and, um, and then move on and discuss other issues. Do any other members wish to speak? Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. There is a lot to cover. I mean, I'm just sort of going through things now. 
from compulsory voting, from looking at ward representations, from looking at postal returns, alignment with state government elections, uh, modernising the City of Adelaide Act or looking at aspects of modernising modernizing some of the local government acts. There was so much to look at and the only one thing that Councillor Sims wants to focus on is political membership and donations. That's it. From the party, the Greens party, the only Greens party that in this state got involved in the election. Their executive voted against the previous standing Lord Mayor's That's candidate and members. That's what they did. That's what was That's reported in the media. That's factually. That's incorrect. what was reported That's in the media. The, you read. the party membership in the Greens are the first party politics to get involved in state government and local government elections. What about TV? Unbelievable. Members, Absolutely please. unbelievable. So if that's all that matters, I don't know how Councillor Sims can walk down the road, door knock ratepayers and say to them, hey, you know what I moved today? I moved that people can declare their political party donations. That's what I moved today. That's what's going to bring back to your small business. And that's how I'm going to cut back your rights as a resident. This is not work sensitive that Councillor needs to look at now. Through a workshop, there's an opportunity. And Councillor Sims should also look at his next motion, which says, one, notes very clearly we, that there's an opportunity. We are debating this motion. Yeah, yeah, I'm not debating the next motion. I'm just explaining no. the process. He has requested that we put a submission in. Why can't we do the same thing here? We have an opportunity to put a bigger submission in for the state, for the Minister for Local Government to explain what we're trying to achieve and look at the outcomes that we want to change uh, in the Local Government Act and the City of Adelaide Act. So that's the opportunity we've got. And I think that's exactly what we need to focus on. So this will take all the on board. We're able to add value to it, workshop it. And I also agree from a transparency perspective, I have declared my membership. I put it on my website from the day I nominated. It was live and I've also put my donations on there live. So nothing to be worried about there. Happy to declare it at any given time. And it's also on our register of interest. So there is no issues there whatsoever. But I would also like to understand when someone is doing the declaration and they're doing live donations, does that mean if they fund their campaign prior to the election, they don't declare anything and then someone gives them a check on the opposite side of the election after they get elected? How does it work? This is just simple English language and we need to understand the mechanism of how this is applied. You don't just simply willingly apply it, put the donations online. What if you don't receive the donations till after the election? What happens there? Nothing. You don't solve the problem. So we have an opportunity here to review this properly and to produce a document to the government that once and for all, they don't do this all the time, once in 10 years, once in 15 years, they can take all our changes on board, hopefully, as part of the legislation change. Members, does anybody else want to speak to the amendment? If not, Councillor Hyde, would you like to sum up? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, wow, what a cut amongst the pigeons. Um, I just thought it was a good idea to look at the whole thing, all of it thoroughly, do it right, do it once. Um, uh, I would say, just touching on what uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor said, um, uh, touching on the simplicity of the, of the suggestion, I have no issue with the suggestion that I've uh, now scrubbed, admittedly, but um, I would say on complexity with regards to reporting political donations, the uh, state of South Australia just went a massive overhaul um, of the systems and requirements and obligations there. Um, on all political parties and other candidates. Uh, I think it's a very thorough and transparent system now. In fact, the, the burden is, is, is very, very high. But these are sorts of things that we would look at. And what prompted that, um, that thought was that uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor said, what happens after the election when donations are made? Um, well, what happens after is that you still have to report on them. So these are the, th are the sorts of things that we would need to consider in a workshop to get it right and get it right the first time. I mean, we're not going to be um, uh, using these rules in an in a, or these particular rules in an electoral sense um, uh, for the next three years or so. So um, uh, also, I, I would uh, say that I greatly value experience in this role. Um, and uh, as, as a young counsellor, I think mentoring is invaluable. Um, uh, and I, I do accept and understand um, that uh, councillors who may have been here for, for many, many years wouldn't necessarily see all the things that I see wrong um, with how we operate. Um, but that's the beauty of this chamber is that we have a very diverse chamber um, uh, in backgrounds and in age groups. And I think we should make use of that, um, again, in such an environment as a workshop to consider this. Um, and just, uh, just the last point I would make is that I find things every day that I think aren't necessarily working well. And I think, how can we make that better? I think that's our role here is how can we improve things? 
Um, and like I said, I have no issue with these ideas that were put forward. Um, they have no bearing on, on, on myself, and I think they would add to transparency. But I, I just make the point, uh, even today, earlier today, I find out we have some statutory obligations with regards to our budgeting process that we have to do year in, year out, and it doesn't work. And so we have Councillor Sims bringing a motion to try and introduce something that does work, um, uh, and yet, you know, all, all the while not supporting an idea that would allow us to flesh out, well, what are we, what are we going to do with, uh, with that particular thing? Should we write to the minister and suggest that we, that we get rid of that or, or have something that is more innovative and more useful and, and meets our needs and the needs of the public? So um, uh, I would just say that I commend the motion. Like I said, do it right, do it once. Thank you. Members, um, if we could now vote on the amendment, those in favour? That is carried. Um, is there any further discussion on the amendment? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Sims to sum up. And sum up. Summed up. Yeah. So uh, we now vote on that motion as a substantive. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, Councillors, take you to item 15.3, Councillor Sims, motion on notice of reducing single use plastics. Thank you, um, Lord Mayor. I move that the Council note that the State Government has recently released two discussion papers on reducing single use plastics and expanding the container deposit scheme. Notice that feedback on these papers must be received uh, by, I note the change, the 1st of March. 2019 and request that administration prepare a submission on these papers for endorsement by council at its meeting on the 26th of February. As seconded by the Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, very briefly, and I thank administration for their comments in terms of the timelines there. You'd note I've changed the motion to reflect that. Um, it's not very often that I praise the um, Liberal government, state Liberal government, but I was delighted to um, read about this proposal to look at reducing single-use plastics um, and also to look at improving the container deposit scheme, um, both of which are, I think are really exciting innovations for our environment. Uh, this council has played a very important role, I think, in leading the way in terms of reducing single-use plastics. And indeed, I pay tribute to your leadership on um, that, uh, Lord Mayor, during the last term of council. Um, members may recall that council uh, supported ending the use of straws within council events. Um, and we have really been leading the way in terms of talking to the business community as well around um, how they can make improvements in this regard. And so this is really just an opportunity for us to put a submission on the table and uh, feed in and uh, give some feedback to the government on uh, what I think is a, a very worthy proposal. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Deputy Lord Mayor. Members. Councillor Donovan. Um, I wholeheartedly support this uh, this motion and I just point to the fact that, of course, we are a council that is looking toward carbon neutral Adelaide. We're looking towards significant improvements with our, with our waste management system. Uh, this is very much in alignment with it and, of course, it would provide us with the opportunity to specifically address how this motion would, or how the single, the reduction in single use plastics would help us to meet our goals and how we could help to meet the state government goals that are aligned with this endpoint. So I wholeheartedly uh, would support the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kerra. Just to clarify, I know the administration's comment is that there has been an extension provided to the submission deadline, de deadlines to Friday the 1st of March. Um, and further, given the extension until the 1st of March and the time required to review the two discussion papers, a report could be prepared. Um, am I talking about the wrong thing? So you can I take, get, get clarification? Do we have more time? Yes, so I incorporated uh, that into the motion. Okay. Yeah. So 26th of February. Oh, so you, sorry, did, you, did that just happen or did I miss that? Um, no. So, so Councillor Kerr, to that end, Councillor Sims, could I just get you to clarify the dates because I've got I've got different dates in the motion on notice. Yes, sorry, Lord Mayor. When I read out the motion, I incorporated the revised dates that administration had provided. Please clarify those. Those. Oh, thank you. So, um, 
what I read out was, um, I noted the revised uh, date of um, the 1st of March um, and uh, requested that administration prepare a submission by the 26th of February. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Clare, uh, Clare, does that yes, make yes. more sense? Yes, yes. thank you. Um, any other councillors wish to speak as much? Well? Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you. Look, I'm very supportive uh, of this and thank you, Councillor Sims, for bringing this on board. It's a great way to provide a submission in a collective way and to bring also some of the learnings we've got uh, as we have been leading in this space for a little while uh, to provide some of our, um, I guess, solutions and some of the aspects of policy that we've introduced already uh, to the state government as well through that submission. Would there be an opportunity for us to do that or no? Question of administration. Through the Lord, absolutely, yes. Look, excellent. Look, I commend this motion to you and uh, I look for everyone's support. Anyone else wish to speak to the motion? Councillor Sims to Summer. Summer. Thank you. If we could now vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. <coughs> Uh, members, next item is 15.3. Councillor Dr Donovan, motion on notice, Wattle Grove War Memorial. Could you stand please? Thank you Lord Mayor. Um, so uh, the motion is that Council notes that the Australasian Soldiers Dardanelles Cenotaph, the first cenotaph in Australia, has been relocated from Gold Wattle Park uh, Manuwira to the Anzac Memorial Walk. Request that a design project be identified in the 2019-20 draft integrated business plan to explore opportunities to create a commemorative location and community destination in the South Parklands. Within this to consider both the original location of the cenotaph in Wattle Grove, adjacent to Sir Lewis Cohen Avenue and the later location of Lundy Gardens. Reinstating the grove of wattle trees in Wattle Grove, adjacent to Lewis Cohen Avenue, and options for a new memorial in one of these locations to commemorate a significant wartime event. Also authorises the CEO or delegate to negotiate with Veterans SA, the Veterans Advisory Council, and other similar bodies to seek design advice and request potential funding assistance. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, you seconding? Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. So this comes to, I bring this to the Chamber as a representative of the South Ward. This is how um, I was approached um, to bring this to the Council by historians, residents, also families of veterans um, for whom this is a very significant location. The, the cenotaph, as noted in the motion, is the very first cenotaph in Australia. Um, so it is, it's very significant and it has now been re relocated. It has been in the South Parklands since 1915. Um, the Wattle Grove that was there previously, um, based on the historical uh, advice and uh, notation, was a grove of native wattle that commemorates, that, that was a commemorative location for this very important historical uh, piece. And it was a place for reflection for veterans and their families to be able to come um, to recognise those who had fallen. And in fact, there were a hundred um, individuals who brought these wattle trees into location um, as a specific uh, memorial to those who had fallen. So um, I think it's appropriate that as a representative of the South Ward and of those who have come to me that we move this uh, motion to consider how we can reinstate the Wattle Grove, a native living uh, memorial that would allow us to continue some piece of this uh, memorial in location now that the cenotaph is on Anzac Walk. Um, members, just before I go to Deputy Lord Mayor, um, there are two typographical errors in the administrative comment in part two. It should read as part of the Anzac Centenary Memorial War Project in late 2018, the state government relocated the Australasian Soldiers Dardanelle Cenotaph to the northernmost point of the walk. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. I've got to speak in favour of this, but I've just got one question only with regards to the last paragraph. It's my understanding in the beginning that Veterans SA was supportive of the move, but now they're also supportive of creating um, uh, some type of a commemorative 
plant in that space or area. When we're talking about requesting potential funding for assistance, are we funding anything ourselves or are we requesting that they are funding the project? Is that going to the mover of the motion or to Another administration. the administration? Do we know anything? Thanks, Beth. Um, through you, Lord Mayor. It's, nice. um, it's nice to be accompanied by it's music, nice I have to say. Um, through you, Lord Mayor, um, it's our understanding that they're. Um, you can't shut the doors. It is rather lovely, isn't it? I arranged it specially. Um, it's our understanding that there is some funding potentially available. Um, we will explore that with um, Veterans Affairs pending the outcome of this motion. So there's any expenditure from Council that will come back to Council before the expenditure is Correct, as a part of the IBP process. With that, with that I'll have this. Okay, thank you. <laughs> members, we're having a musical interlude. Um, would any other members like to speak to this motion? Councillor Knoll. I mean, I've been quite fortunate uh, to be involved a little bit as they, as they were discussing the Anzac walk and the removal of the, of the, of the cenotaph. And I think uh, uh, when you think that Adelaide is, is still a relatively young city and to be able to have a space that has such, uh, you know, motive uh, feelings, etc., um, you know, it was erected before they knew the outcome of, of their loved ones in the, in the, at Gallipoli, etc. And I think uh, to be able to, uh, to have these sorts of spaces and also beautify the, the, the parklands and, and give them meaning, I think is quite brilliant. And uh, you know the, our our place in the in the world is, is certainly um, you know enhanced by us having those special uh, and very uh, emotional type of uh, spaces that we can celebrate those that have really uh, you know sacrificed a lot and uh, and also give us the unique spaces in in, in our city that uh, uh, you know reflect who we are. And I think it's uh, you know wonderful to be able to, to contribute towards that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Is there are there any other speakers to the motion? If not, uh, Councillor Dr. Dom, would you like to sum up? Summed up. Thank you. If we can now vote, those in favour, those against, that motion is carried. We now go to item 16, motions without notice. Um, several and first one will be Councillor Sims. Um, motion without notice of Adelaide Open. I'm back again <clears throat> and enjoying the music this time. Um, Lord Mayor, I move that Council notes that the Stadium Management Authority has given a public undertaking, as reported in Adelaide Now, 29 January 2019, that they will refer the Adelaide Oval Hotel proposal to the Commonwealth Government pursuant to the provisions of the EPBC Act 1990 and regulations for considerations and action which may impact on the national heritage listing of the Adelaide Parklands and City layout reserves its right to refer the matter under the EPBC Act 1999 should the Stadium Management Authority's referral not proceed. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Could I have a second, please? Councillor Moran. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, just to give um, some members some background on um, this motion, it came about through a discussion that we had at the Adelaide Parklands Authority on Thursday night. There were questions raised uh, by um, members of the um, APLA about the impact of the Adelaide Park uh, Lands um, Hotel um, on uh, city heritage. Um, and some members asked whether there had been a referral under the um, EPBC Act. For members who are not familiar with the EPCB Act, the Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act 1999 is the Australian Government's central piece of environmental legislation. So it provides a legal framework to protect and manage nationally and internationally important flora, fauna, ecological uh, communities and heritage places, and those are defined in the Act as matters of national environmental significance. And of course, we know that our parklands are of such significance. Indeed, when the federal government listed the Adelaide parklands uh, on the national heritage list back in 2008, they did so recognising that the parklands were valued not just to the people of South Australia, but also to the whole um, Australian community. And um, 
that means, of course, that it's really critical that they are protected and that they're uh, respected. And projects that threaten this heritage status should not proceed. And uh, it should be, in, in my view, standard practice for proposals that impact on this status to be referred under the Act for consideration. So you can uh, imagine my delight, Lord Mayor, having um, spoken to the uh, advertiser about this, to read this afternoon that the Stadium Management Authority have agreed to um, refer the matter um, themselves. Uh, they have said that uh, they will refer um, the matter under the Act for consideration. They should have done so to begin with before they put this proposal forward. Um, because I think to not have even bothered to ask those questions is uh, really foolhardy. But this is a win for all those who care about uh, protecting our parklands. And the SNA have been shamed into taking this action, but it is good that they're going to be doing this referral. I hope that this now becomes the norm and uh, we see proposals like this being uh, referred um, so that there can be full consideration of these issues. In terms of the implication of this motion, it really notes the SMA's action, but it leaves open the door for Council to revisit this if the SMA don't make good on their commitment. And uh, I want to make it very clear that if they don't do what they've said they're going to do, then I will bring the matter back to Council for consideration at another meeting. Thank, Thank you, you. Councillor Sins. Yeah. Councillor Moran. Thank you. Uh, would any other councillor like to speak to this motion? I've got a question. Yes, um, councillor Do we, um, how do we get confirmation that SMA have done this? Do we go back to them in a few weeks' time and uh, check that they have done this? Or uh, is there a, a next step to this? Through administration? Not through, Lord Mayor. We can write to the SMA uh, asking for confirmation that they have submitted as they have suggested publicly, so we can do that. Thank you, Councillor. Would anybody else like to speak to this motion? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Sims. Summed up, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Uh, if we could vote by show of hands, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Councillor Hyde, motion without notice, e scooters. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Do I read out the motion, Jane? Yes. Yes. Uh, so I move that uh, Council notes that e-scooters are currently prohibited from use on public roads and footpaths in South Australia, notes the Department of Planning, Transport and Infrastructure is exploring options to legalise e-scooters on public roads and footpaths, which may include a temporary exemption for e-scooter share operators to facilitate a trial during, the Adelaide's, 20, during Adelaide's 2019 festival season. And that we move, that we delegate authority to the CEO to develop a temporary permit for up to two e-scooter share program operators <laughs> to facilitate a trial in the city of Adelaide. Should the state should the state grant a temporary exemption for e-scooter share operators to facilitate a trial, including but not limited to considerations of safety, placement of scooters, monitoring fleet, complaints, process complaints processes for inappropriately located bikes, and the number of e-scooters in each program. Thank you. Do I have a second? Councillor Kerr. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, so we have an opportunity here tonight uh, to, I suppose, break a new ground in the city of Adelaide. Um, as the motion says, uh, it is essentially illegal um, uh, to ride uh, electric mobility devices in the city. Um, uh, this, is a, this is a little bit backwards of us. Um, some people are surprised when they learn that. They say, oh, I see. Segways rolling around, um, and you do. But what is unknown is uh, lesser known is that those segways are travelling on, on a on a completely regulated, predetermined path. There must be someone in front and behind at all times, um, and it's it's by and large very very heavily regulated. Um, uh, so I think uh, in this day and age, um, uh, people are people are savvy enough to be able to, to grasp technology such as this uh, mobility technology, um, and so. I'm hoping tonight that Council will pass this motion in order to facilitate uh, uh, what could be a very good opportunity to test this um, in the upcoming festival season. Um, there are a couple of operators who are interested in coming in and uh, their plans are, are relatively well progressed. They've been trialling things elsewhere in the country um, uh, and in other countries such as New Zealand, but also in Asia as well. So, so this is this is new ground, uh, but it's not necessary. Not it, it it has not necessarily not been tried before. So. 
Um, uh, so we do have the benefit of, uh, of a couple of other trials that have already already occurred. From our perspective here as the City of Adelaide, I think it largely focuses on uh, safety and amenity. Um, those are two of our two of our primary uh, goals. And I think this this model um, and this new technology satisfies those because um, uh, we can speed limit them. Um, not only the devices themselves, but of course uh, we can also say if they're going into particular areas in the city, they can be limited to a certain speed. Um, uh, obviously, they have GPS tracking on them as well, um, and also the uh, because of the, uh, the the amenity factor. So, so these are obviously uh, complicated bits of technology. Somewhat, um, they need to be cared for. The operators do have an interest in, in protecting um, their investment and ensuring that uh, they're in perfect working order and all the rest of it. So, I don't think um, if we approve this tonight in principle, I don't think we will see uh, what's happened in the past with uh, with ride shares going every every which way and what have you. So, um, but adding to that as well, uh, there are a number of other benefits to the city. Um, instead of instead of sometimes being the last to get things, Adelaide can be one of the first in the country. Um, that's one of the reasons I run for council. Um, uh, but moreover, uh, representing South Ward, um, we do want to look at accessibility across the entirety of the city um, and how great would it be uh, to have people coming in perhaps on public transport um, uh, into the central business district doing their business and then hopping on an e-scooter um, uh, for a very quick ride um, down, to, down to Hutt Street or, uh, or the southwest corner uh, and, and support those businesses down there as well. I think that would be a very good thing uh, for my patch in the south part of the city. Um, so I'll leave it there. Um, I commend the motion to the chamber and I very much look forward to whizzing between Hutt Street and the Adelaide Fringe uh, on indulgence. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Kerrow. Councillor Kerrow, did you wish to speak to the motion? No, no. Okay. Uh, would any other councillors like to speak to the motion? Councillor Martin. Yeah, just a quick question. I, I don't have a problem with this. I, I just wonder what's the rush and would the administration advise whether two weeks is a lengthy enough period and that's when the festival season starts, 17th of February. Two weeks is sufficient time to liaise with DIPD, to establish the criteria, to invite applications, to approve the licences, turn the routes and getting it going. Through the administration, the CEO. Through Lord Mayor, there's been a lot of work done on, in the background of this. Beth or Claire, can you respond? list up there. Um, we are already talking to Dicti, so we're aware of, of their position pending um, the Minister's position. I understand there have been some further discussions today and we'll get some more updates on that tomorrow. But having said that, I would say two weeks would be um, sufficient for a pilot to be negotiated. Wow. Councillors, are there any other questions or discussion? No, I'll go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Just very quickly, thank you. Um, just to Councillor Martin's point, uh, yes, as administration said, it's very, very well progressed. Um, I, I do think we have the opportunity here. Sometimes governments can be very risk averse, and, and um, uh, but we have the opportunity here to send a message to the state government and say, uh, if you are considering, if you're on the verge of granting this exemption, uh, we would be very happy. In fact, we encourage you to do so, um, so that we can try new and interesting things. Um, in Adelaide. And of course, timing wise, um, the motion is structured in such a way uh, that obviously it delegates authority to the CEO. Obviously, we're tipping it on its head somewhat. Usually, we would consider these things in depth and then have the final tick off on recommendation from. Uh, from council, so really, this is this is a, an in principle approval um, because we are so close to the festival season. In order to get this happening, we need to resolve the chamber's role um, in this uh, pretty much tonight. So, thank you, members. If we could get a show of hands to vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. And I look forward to doing my festival and fringe uh, shows on a e-scooter. Um, councillors, I think Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, Lord Mayor, I, I had a motion um, lodged on notice, um, and there was a slight mix up when I discussed it with the Lord Mayor, <coughs> who would who advised me to change some of the wording. 
so that's why I said I was going to have one and I've discussed with other councillors and uh, ratepayers. Um, I'd like to put uh, this on notice for the next meeting that when negotiating with the EOR proponents for 88 O'Connell Street, Council's reference group actively encourages consideration for the site to be used by the SMA for the development of a hotel. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Moran. We won't speak to that tonight and thank you for your consideration and putting that motion on notice for uh, feedback from administration and legal advice. Um, members, uh, we now go to item 17, which is exclusion of the public for uh, 18.1.1. Um, so if I could have a, a mover and seconder for a motion to exclude public on item 18.1.1, Councillor Moran, seconder, Councillor Kouros, uh, is there any uh, input? Would anybody like to speak to the motion? No. Councillor Moran, would you like to sum up? So if we could vote, please show our hands, those in favour, those against, Councillor Martin, uh, sorry, didn't need to call that out, that is carried. Uh, councillors, could I have a mover and seconder uh, for a motion to order the exclusion of the public for item 18.1.2? Councillor Moran, seconded Councillor Knoll, anybody like to speak to that motion? Councillor Moran, would you like to sum up? I'm done. Thank you. If we could please vote by a show of hands, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, I'm now going to item point 18.2.1. Uh, uh, if I could have a mover, Councillor Abraham Zadu, a seconder. Could I have a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Uh, Councillor Abraham Zadu, did you want to speak? No, thank you. Summed up. If we can now vote, those in favour. Those against, that is carried. Members of the gallery and staff, thank you for your attendance at this meeting. Um, those members of the gallery and staff not associated with items 18.1.1, 18.1.2 and 18.2.1, can you please now leave the chamber or the council considers the final four items on the agenda.
Thank you, councillors. Uh, that concludes the business of the meeting of council. Um, the doors are now unlocked and the meeting reopens to the public. There being no other items of business, I declare the meeting closed. Thank you.